Okay, first things first is a little fit check. So I'm wearing my brother's Crocs. Sorry, Ben, I hope you don't need them for the next 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so I'm wearing this skirt from Zara. Pink fluffy socks, of course. This is my mum's top. I don't know when it's from. Don't ask me that, actually, because I have no idea. And I don't know where it's from either, but I've just tied it at the back. And uh, what else? Oh, waist braid. Waist braid? <laughs> waist braid. I tried to say bead and braid at the same time. Waist braid from... I made the waist braid, so I don't know what I'm saying from. And that's about it for my fit. Obviously, necklaces. Um, I made this... Can you see it? I made... I didn't make this part, but I added the braid onto it, so I made that. Um, obviously necklace and my Moldavite pendant. So, I'm going to start off with an incense bubble. So, let me come down. Again, why is this a bee? Every time, every single time. I've also moved my chair. Um, so I've moved locations, rather. I've moved locations because it's currently 8.38 p.m. and where I usually film, it's in, it's in the shade now because the sun's going down. So I must be super quick because again, I've left it so late. <laughs> it's actually Saturday, the 3rd of June, 2023. I really thought I would be one of those people that films everything in advance and then just schedules it. But as you'll see, I mean, I can even show you on my Fitbit. Incense bubble for me, incense bubble for you. And on my Fitbit, if you can see that, it's Saturday already. So I'm going to do a little recap. Do a little rejig recap of the day. Bear with me. And yeah, today I thought I thought I would sit on a blanket because I thought that could be quite nice to put this over me. <laughs> I've got a blanket and then I've got another blanket. So, recap of the day is I've been running, not today, but you know, recap of the last few days. I must probably start that again. Um, but yeah, recap is I have been running and you'll see that in this video. I know I said that in the last video that I went running, but you know, I'm so, I'm so, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that I actually said I was going to do something and then I've stuck to it. So I've done that. I've retinted my eyebrows, if you can tell. I don't know if you can, it's, it is actually quite subtle. And I've had a lot of coffee over the past few days. That's about it for a recap. There are other things, but they're not really necessary to put in this video because you're not going to see me doing them so you'll just know and I, I don't know if that's beneficial for you. There is something that I want to do though, I want to talk about how to feel real or how to feel real again because I know that this is something that a fair amount of people struggle with and I've learned and I've been taught how to fully feel real again, you know. Another way of describing feeling real is to feel connected with your body, to feel here, present now, to feel grounded, um, to be the opposite of dissociating. So that's a common word that a lot of people use is dissociation. In terms of learning to stop dissociation, I've got quite a few techniques. I'm going to get into that before the rest of the video. The first one is, in fact, I'll stand up for this for the first one so the first one is one that my mum taught me and it starts like this and in fact I'll even take my socks off and do it properly <laughs> so these are all sort of grounding techniques and you want to start off by looking at your right hand and saying I looking at your left hand and saying and looking at your left foot and saying here and then looking at your right foot and saying now and then you want to do it again but this time instead of just looking you want to feel it so you want to sort of know sort of know 
that your hand is there. Um, I don't know if I step back, <laughs> you'll actually be able to see me a bit better. But so you know that your you know that your right hand is here, and you say I. You know that your left hand is here, and you say am. You know that your left foot is here, and you say here. And you know that your right foot is here, and you say now. And then you want to do it again, so you go I am here now. And you can, if it helps, wiggle your hands as you're saying it. Um, and also, side note, this may be the Alexander technique, um, but I'm not 100% sure. And I know you have to be taught the Alexander technique, whereas my mum taught me this. Um, and there are a few more steps to this, but this is the simplest part, is just to start off by saying, I am here now. And that allows you to feel grounded it's almost a sort of energy loop you know you're trans transversing yeah I'll use that word transversing around your body and um, through the energy so that's the first technique the second technique is being barefoot so in my videos you might see me being barefoot quite a lot because I love it you know it's it's a way to feel grounded you fully feel the ground you know it's here <laughs> The ground is here and that allows you to know and feel real. Another thing is, yeah, this. Clapping your hands, snapping your fingers, um, anything that is noise made from your body, so like this, uh, noise from your body that isn't through your mouth. Um, and what that does is it allows you to again connect with your body it allows you to exist and know that you exist because it gets it's very easy to get lost in the whole speaking um, speaking way of existing i'll put it because everyone speaks and you hear everyone speak and sometimes it can get confusing which voice is yours and which voice is someone else's you know if your mum speaks to you and says the same phrases over and over again you know that might start to become part of your internal voice um, you know your internal monologue as it were you can start to almost lose your own voice um, it sounds a bit odd if you know what I mean you'll know what I mean if you don't then you're quite lucky <laughs> in a way so yeah let me get back on to a couple of other techniques and tricks so in terms of grounding yourself another wonderful thing to do would be to use your hands in a creative way so what I do a lot is I bake bread and that does help my ADHD as well I know I said I wouldn't talk about ADHD but if someone has ADHD and they're watching this, then I hope that helps you. Something like baking bread, using your hands, using your body, you know, when you're kneading bread, it is actually a lot of physical effort. It's a lot of physical exertion. And that's why it's really good for grounding yourself because you're connecting with something. You're connecting with the bread, which is connecting with the board or the tabletop or the countertop, whatever you're placing it upon. So, bread baking bread baking cakes yeah whisking if you use a hand whisk i always try and use a hand whisk because it, again it's about this physical movement of this is meant to be the bowl <laughs> it's about this physical movement of whisking you know if you use an if you use an electronic whisk then all you're doing is you're just standing there there's not really any sort of connection you know you're not really putting any energy in the the power is putting the energy in the power from the electricity is what I meant. I'm assuming you know that, but in case you don't, then that's what I meant. So another another way is nature. So gardening. Um, if you've watched my how to plant carrots or too many carrots, I think it's called video, you'll see me gardening, you'll see me planting. And that's a wonderful way of connecting with nature. You know, it's all about being being present you know to stop dissociation you need to allow yourself to be present and how you allow yourself to be present is by 
physically connecting with things you know it's a lot easier to dissociate if the only thing you're connecting with is a screen I know I sound like I'm 50 years old again <laughs> but it's true you know it, it's trial tested and proven true by me it's you know it's my personal experience I dissociate more when I am on screens when I am you know scrolling through TikTok perhaps or Instagram or Pinterest or you know sitting there watching YouTube videos it's there's a barrier there is a literal barrier between the person that you're watching or the photo that you're looking at and yourself you know when you look at a person in real life you are seeing them when you look at a person through a screen the screen is creating this barrier and it's like you can't reach through the screen and touch this person but when someone's standing there you can reach through the air and touch that person you know so that's a couple of methods i'll try and think of a couple more quickly um painting so any sort of art therapy is a wonderful way of connecting and stopping dissociation and i do believe that there are ways you can actively dissociate less while still using screens however you must place a lot more attention and a lot more focus upon that which you are connecting with and um, you know so a lot of graphic graphic design artists they will uh, use an ipad or something and they will you know draw upon it and do that rather than you know a piece of pen and a piece of paper rather and a pen and they will place a lot of focus on it however they can still be doing it mindlessly you know and yes you can still be doing art mindlessly on paper however you're still physically connecting with the paper you know you can feel it's very subtle but you can feel the vibrations of a pencil scratching upon a piece of paper you know and you can feel that it goes it goes up it goes from the friction, from the resistance of the pencil on the paper and travels up the pencil, travels up into your arm, into your hand, up into your arm. Uh, whereas when you do it on a screen, it's smooth, it's almost too smooth, you know. Um, there is a bit more resistance definitely for the paper, but that's not to say that there isn't resistance when you're doing it on screen. It's just less. So if you want to actively dissociate less, it starts by being here, like physically, physically being here. So I've, I've listed the I am here now. I've listed gardening, I've listed painting, I've listed being barefoot and being grounded. Hugging, hugging, hugging yourself. That's not what you thought I was going to say, no, but this, like, I'll stand up again. This, you can feel this, this, you know, you can, you can physically feel your own hands on your own body. And that's a wonderful thing for giving yourself love, you know, self-love. It's a wonderful thing to hug yourself. And hey, if you don't try it, then you can't come to me and say that doesn't I implore you to please please try it please try hugging yourself but also hug another if there is another that you can hug around you hug them you know especially with the whole I don't know you know what I mean c-word time in, <laughs> in 20 2019 2020 2021 2022 you know a lot of people just stopped hugging and there's this whole research about how you need seven hugs a day and that's I think what I miss most about living in Sheffield with my friends was that yeah I said to them when I first met them I was like you need seven hugs a day I demand hugs hug me <laughs> and it's so nice you know I'll see these people all well, these people I'll see my friends or I used to rather every single day pretty much and it was like almost every single day when I would see them, I would give them a hug, you know, and they would give me a hug. It was like a couple of them lived right opposite me. Like we lived in the same flat in the same corridor. You know, we didn't need to hug that much, but it does, it makes you feel good. It's literally your heart connecting with another's when you hug. 
Um, so yeah, my incense stick's gone out, which means it's time for this video to end, but hopefully you've learned a lot, you know, and hopefully you'll try out some of these grounding techniques and come back to me with any grounding techniques. I'm speaking like people are watching my videos, but you know, maybe in the future, someone will comment, you know, it could be a week, it could be a month, it could be however long, who knows, but if you're watching this and you know other grounding techniques, then please comment them because, you know, I would like to learn more as well, you know, and I'm sure other people, you know, my 13 viewers <laughs> would, would also like to know. So yeah, on to the rest of the video. Enjoy me running. At least I look nice now. At least I look you know presentable because in the next part of the video i'm i'm rough i'm rough i am hot i am sweaty my face is all red but you know that's what exercise can do for you oh quickly on the exercise point another way of grounding yourself is hard physical exercise do it it's it's yeah getting your blood pumping and just feeling in your body and by that i mean running even if you can't run try it like go for a little like you go for a little like sprint <laughs> no um do you know do a couple squats and you know lift weights if you have weight if you don't have any weights just go ahead do like do a couple push-ups yeah do some plank okay i'm going on way too many points you get the gist there okay exercise i want to see you exercising and not just walking and if you feel like you can't physically Say you have a bad ankle or a bad back that's okay do a different part of your body even if you just sat down doing weights you know something just do something okay sweet love you bye this is what i mean when i say the sun is setting and also i love aeroplane trails they just they fill me with this sense of euphoria as in wow like where are they going Okay, said I was gonna do it, so I'm doing it. This is my fit. I'm gonna get really hot. I'll show you my sports bra. Is it's Gucci, so I'm thinking I could just run without it, but actually, I'm gonna get really hot. I said I was gonna do it. I said I was gonna go for a run. So bum bag on. I'm wearing my cousin's basketball shorts. Put my crystal in the bum bag so I can get out. And yeah. Jesus, I start and then I'm like, oh, I haven't set my Fitbit, so I'm gonna do that. This is where I'm gonna be running in the woods. Very nice, very sweet, very divine. I'm gonna stop filming so I can run. Okay, do my run. Well, I can't even speak. I'm definitely out of breath. And I'm not halfway, I'm like near the end of my run. And I've come to my local park. And look what they've got. They've got this whole gym set. You know, like how some parks are like, Oh, we want to turn everyone into a fitness freak. I feel like blood is coming up my throat. Oh, I'm so unfit. Anyway, I'm going to attempt to do some sort of pull-up on here because I'm trying to learn how to do pull-ups. This is going to be a nightmare. Listen to my voice back. Okay. 
Nope. Zero upper body strength. How strong the wind is, it blew my phone off. I'll finish with a back bend. Why not? Fine. Temporary, I haven't stretched out my back. Down. I saw the ground and then I was like, it's too close. Okay, but how do I get up? This is where I should kick up, but I don't have to do that. So, I'm just gonna do that. Um, and probably run back. Remember my bum bag. But yeah, I've been saying that I'll learn the kick over for like, I don't know, six or seven years. Okay, now I should really stretch my back out. Or because I've got my headphones on, they could be like, oh, she's. This is really risky doing the park because obviously a lot of dogs shit. However, it's time to be one with nature. It is. It's time to be one with nature. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to run back. Jog. Run. Back. Yes, I might walk. No, I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Look, I'm doing it now. Ah, running back. This is the result of my run. So 21 minutes and two kilometers. It'll be a good reference for, you know, the next time I run. Um, I'm trying to do this every day of June. You've heard me here first. It's the first of June. And yeah, this is what I am working just to be. I don't even have a goal. I just want to... Oh, zone minutes, what else is there? Oh, that's it. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to beat. Keeps going off, but you get the gist. That was my calorie steps, heart rate, but yeah. You know. This is my favorite time of the day. As you just saw, it's 4 3 a.m. And... Yeah, that, all the birds have just woken up and they're, they're just... Mm. It's divine. It's so nice. I feel like the birds are giving me little messages from the universe. <laughs> Makes sense if you believe it. Okay, it's 7.51 a.m. And I've finally finished my nails. This is the second hand. Um, two things. One is I don't plan the nail art. I just let anything that comes out of my brain go into it. Um, although this one actually was meant to be a spider and then I forgot to add eyes. Bumblebee, can you see the bumblebee? Hi, Mr. Bumblebee. This is laburnum. And it's really cool because it makes an archway. <laughs> it's like... Oh, there's another bumblebee. So I came out here to show my nails, but this is a lot prettier than my nails. But fine, if you insist. Oh, there's another bumblebee. 
Baby, hi. They look messy, but the edges will come off with hand soap. And I thought I'll document them before I chip them because I am a chipper. I'm a nail chipper. You've heard it here first. It's an accident, I don't mean to. However, these will most likely be chipped very, very soon. Could even be tomorrow, could be later today. <laughs> Gave myself until tomorrow, that's a bit of a exaggeration. Hmm. Anyway, I'm probably disturbing the bees, so I'm gonna go back. Yeah, divine. I'm wearing my brother's Crocs. I don't have my own Crocs. Ooh! Sorry, Bumblebee. I almost walked into it. Him, her. Anyway, yeah. That, that was a gasp because I stood on a flower and I felt bad. It was growing in the ground, but yeah. Oh, okay, I forgot about that part. It is that time of day where I'm having a coffee. In fact, I'm having a cappuccino. Well, imagine the scenes. Shall we? Now, of course, this down on top of here this actually makes sometimes i just do things for the lull of it um it's balanced my water bottle ignore this again a lot of sugar. I don't want that much. I feel like sugar is the one addiction that people don't really talk about. I had this flatmate and he always used to say how the one thing he always got addicted to was sugar. <laughs> and he got to the point where he couldn't have chocolate or anything because he would just have one bar and then he'd just be addicted for like the next 30 days until he got it out of the until he got it under control, like I should be, like being a bit more quiet. Obviously, back up on top. Hmm. So, coffee, of course. Must start the day with a coffee. This is my second coffee, but, you know, it's fine. It's divine. It is currently 25 past five. <laughs> that wasn't meant to rhyme. I just thought cinnamon in a coffee would be divine. And yes, this time I'm using my right hand because I remember what happened last time. Cinnamon for wealth and manifesting unexpected financial blessings or expected financial blessings with the cinnamon. I'm trying to do the lid back up. Oh, no, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, look at that. Cinnamon, cinnamon. Oh, what a pretty pattern. You know, I used to be a barista. I could make a little. What could I make? I could make a heart. They always say don't play with your food, but I think that's the best part of it. It's not exactly a heart yet. Bear with. Two sex. There. It does, in a way. Well, it did, and then I started, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why am I doing this? I could drink it before it gets cold. Mm. Oh, smiley face. <laughs> okay. <laughs>